Hey guys, Omni here. We got a trailer the other day for She-Hulk coming to Disney Plus. And if you haven't seen my reaction to it, I recommend you check it out. I think it looks quite interesting and I can't wait to give it a go, man. But New Rockstars did a breakdown of the trailer as expected. And we're going to be checking out the Easter eggs and hidden details that Eric over there has found. So guys, if you're not following these guys, go check them out. Give them a go. They have some awesome breakdowns. That said, guys, let's go ahead and jump into this thing. Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of the new trailer for She-Hulk on Disney+, Plus, starring Tatiana Maslany as Jennifer Walters, attorney at law, cousin to Bruce Banner, and uh, someone for whom my admiration, I swear to you, remains a uh, wholesome professional respect. <laughs> Anyone complaining about the CGI? We just may be better off in the Uncanny Valley right now, because uh, if this looked too lifelike, major portions of the productivity in America would have come to a screeching halt when this trailer dropped. From the return of Tim Roth as Emil Blonsky Abomination, to Frog Man sightings and precisely why the CGI okay. is a little off in some spots. I'm Interesting. Break okay. Trailer frame by frame for the details that you missed. Let's go. Being a superhero is a trial by fire. Who's gonna protect the world if not people like you? So we open on the LA skyline, <laughs> already a bit of a change of the pace for the MCU, which hasn't really been in the modern day LA area since Iron Man 3. We hear the voice of Bruce Banner giving the hero talk to his cousin Jennifer as a fancy event comes under siege. This actually looks like the event that Jen later in this trailer attends in her nice dress. And now outside, we see these armored soldiers carrying these interesting looking hmm. weapons. These actually look like a smaller handheld version of the sonic cannons that General Ross used on Hulk in the 2008 film. They kind of do. These opening credits actually came from a stark industries design these showed up later equipped on the stark drones in spider-man far from home and war machine suit had a version of this in civil war in this case it looks like a defensive measure used against hulk powered threats maybe she hulk or maybe TG. abomination we see this gang carrying some interesting weapons crowbars hooks a crossbow what kind of threat are they facing uh, if not a <laughs> zombies one, like vampires or werewolves there's an eccentric mix of tones in this trailer perhaps reflecting this series format as a nine episode half hour legal comedy with jen taking on a new case of the week each week which all could showcase oh that'd be so fun the world vampires specifically have come up more and more like in loki and eternals, eternals yeah, I mean, yeah. in its post-credit scene we saw a crossbow in the sanctum undercroft in spider-man no way home this october is going to be werewolf by night halloween special she hulk just seems like a very apt place to introduce these different things this game huh. may also be the wrecking group from the comics also known for wielding crowbars or they could just be another group of guys carrying weird shit then we see a car wreck accurate might be part of the inciting incident of Jen's transformation. Now in the comics, Jennifer Walters as a prosecutor cracking down on organized crime ends up getting targeted by the mafia and shot, leaving to her cousin Bruce having to give her a transfusion. And that blood is how she ends up getting her Hulk powers. However, later in this trailer, Jen appears outside that car looking at the dark reflection in the dented car door and she already begins to transform. So maybe she got a transfusion before this or it may just be innate to her family DNA. Perhaps active. That would be an interesting change. Gamma radiation when Hulk snapped everyone back in Endgame, which is something that Hulk indicated. The radiation's mostly gamma. It's like, uh, I was made for this. So the uniqueness of Banner's blood hmm. that initially reacted to the gamma radiation in a specific way to turn him into Hulk may be the same unique DNA trait that is also... I'm curious how they do that. that. Everyone on Earth has been hit with gamma radiation. It just caused her to react this specific way. We get a quick shot of Jen's Hulk... Yeah, I just didn't pay attention there. At least I didn't notice it. I, I just assumed that... I, I, I mean, I saw it. Like, I, I was like, she's looking at the door of the wrecked car, and like, but she's transforming. I didn't put two and two together because I was like, oh, yeah, this is, that's probably the wreck that causes her to need the transfusion. But then why would she be transforming right there unless she was already, you know, gifted with the blood or the, I don't know what, are, what you would call it, these powers. Okay, okay. Got to reset my mind a little bit. Here we go. Out physique and athletic gear. We saw this in the November teaser. Again, I just love how she's wearing the white, purple, and black color scheme as she does in her long time. Hell yeah. In the comics. Moving on. I'm Jennifer Walters. I'm a lawyer. I have great friends. Can we get some shots, please? It's an emergency. A uh, demanding job. We just started a superhuman law division, and I want you to be the face of it. 
Okay, the Marvel Studios title card turns a bright shade of green, and it starts from a little green flare of light from beneath Marvel, suggesting that, yeah, it might be a burst of gamma radiation that was the cause of Jen's transformation. Jen introduces us to her Or world. just a nice she little effect on the logo. Gonzaga. They have open wine bottles all over the house. In the wine bottle drawer right is the Velvet Devil label. Stop putting devil fake outs in the trailers, Marvel. <laughs> You're just making him angry. Hamilton's Renee Elise Goldberry plays Amelia. I'm assuming a legal colleague of Jennifer's. In her oh, nice. An hourglass because she's obviously a TVA agent. Uh, please click away. If I don't at least mention these things, he punishes me. But it's worth noting that in the comics, She Hulk represents a variety of clients working one case in front of the TVA, and another time representing Eros, a yeah. sexual assault case. Yeah. Uh, I really wonder if they'll, they'll do that. Cigar plays another employee at this firm. You can see on the screen it shows GL Wait a minute. slash H in the same design as the November title card for this series that thankfully now has been updated because I like this new title way better. GLKH stands for Goodman, Lieber, Kurtzberg, and Holloway, Prometheus? which is the name of Jen's law firm in the 2004 run of the comics by Dan Slott. Now, the name Goodman was a reference to Marvel publisher Martin Goodman, Lieber, a reference that to Adrian Stan Chase? Lee's actual last name, Stanley from Martin Arrow, Lieber. not and Kurtzberg, a reference to Jack Kirby's legal last name, Kurtzberg. In the comics, these these three partners are never shown, which is why their three letters were grouped together. Holloway is the only partner who Jen um, deals with. When Jen and Nikki get shots, Jen's clothes are actually She-Hulk's color scheme once again. Black blazer, white shirt, green pants, and purple light on her shirt. Then we see this awesome new maximum security facility located in the middle of the desert with high perimeter walls and an energy field fence on the drive-in. This interesting architecture makes me wonder if damn. this could be the MCU version of the Cube. Originally a shield black site in the Nevada desert designed to contain gamma irradiation inmates and also became the home base of the Thunderbolts. The patches on the guards show a sigil of an eagle carrying arrows that looks a lot like the U.S. Department of Justice, but this isn't the DODC that has a different logo, whereas S.W.O.R.D. was overseen by him. Hmm. And now, perhaps Interesting. Mark Rambeau or Abigail Brand, maybe Nick Fury, the Wrath prison was overseen by Secretary of State Thaddeus Ross, R.I.P. William Pert. This hmm. agency may be under the supervision of Val, someone we know was involved in some shadowy government agency, and you could totally imagine Julia Louis-Dreyfus showing up in the series. A Back at the firm, Jen's supervisor is Holloway, that being the same Holloway partner of this firm name. And it sounds like they're now branching out to handle cases pertaining to superheroes. The same kind of legal work provided by Matt Murdock in Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, while I imagine Matt Murdock would stick to the New York area, it's really only a matter of time before these two Marvel lawyers cross paths. So hopefully Charlie Cox shows up on the show. That'd be awesome. Now, Holloway specifically yes. wants Jen to be the face of the superhero law division, suggesting that this may come about after her tenancy to Hulk out emerges. It looks like one of her clients is Emil Blonsky, aka Abomination, Tim Roth, returning from the 2008 Hulk film. Yes. Remember, Abomination ended that film getting KO'd by Hulk in the Battle of Harlem and was actually later the planned recruit by S.H.I.E.L.D. for one of the Avengers until we saw in that Marvel one shot, Coulson and Selvig used Tony Stark to talk Ross into recruiting Bruce Banner instead. Blonsky was name dropped in an episode of Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D., apparently kept in a cold storage facility in Alaska. And of course, we last saw Abomination in Shang-Chi, sparring with Wong in the Golden Daggers Club of Macau. Actually, when Wong opened that portal to take Abomination back, the background room showed that this is the same room that he is now in in She-Hulk. Yep. Now, Wong is confirmed to appear in this series as well, so we'll likely get some answers to why Wong was partnered with Abomination in that movie. Was Wong sneaking him out, or was this approved by the government? I'm Maybe it's like a parole. Were actually part of a deal to train up Abomination as oh, a or that. soldier as part of Val's Dark Avengers crew. Maybe alongside Yelena Belova and John Walker. Maybe Blonsky now now what's out of that deal and that's why he is now lawyering up either way i hope we get some kind of rematch between hulk and abomination in the series i mean that would right be there. cool let's see the fight let them fight but you still gotta deal with it okay jennifer visits bruce in his new home on this tropical coastline not sure where exactly this is but later she hulk wears a shirt reading i heart mexico so this may be along the mexican coastline like the yucatan maybe one of the places banner stopped during his journey from brazil to the u.s in Could the 2008 be. film let's not forget all of that happened in the mcu even though it feels like so long ago bruce pulls out a binder probably containing his research that he conducted over that 18 months of the gamma lab that he mentioned in that game <laughs> <laughs> some mysterious cure to reach his current balance and control over his 
Hulk abilities. And he says, you didn't ask for this. So it really does sound like the series might be suggesting Jen's Hulk powers could start with a unique quality to their family DNA, which is only now activated by a recent burst of gamma radiation. Now, notice how the shots here are taken from two different scenes. One where Hulk is wearing a zip-up hoodie, another where he's wearing this t-shirt. Amazing that he found one that fits him. It's got an interesting logo. At first, I thought this could be related to S.H.I.E.L.D., but the bolts emanating out of it make me wonder if this could actually be a logo that he made for himself in his hmm. gamma radiation, like his new Hulk logo. I thought it kind of looked like a Horus or something of the sort, but doesn't seem to be the case. Now, the second scene looks like it is part of a meditation session. Like, he's, like, saying, relax, breathe. Hulk could be teaching so how to relax weird the there to me. Meditation, remember, was a huge part of Bruce's regimen in the 2008 film. Now, we still do and not breath know exactly control. why Bruce was shown in human form with his arm in a sling in that Shang-Chi post credit scene, especially now that he's back in Hulk form with his arm completely healed. Kevin Feige told Screen Rant that that sling was intentional, and I have theorized that maybe Hulk hmm. depowered a human form to allow himself to give a life-saving transfusion to Jen, but the IMAX aspect ratio of that Shang-Chi post credit scene showed Banner was also on his other arm wearing a piece of wrist tech with a glowing green piece to it, which now after Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness has come out kind of reminds us of those 838 cufflinks that were powered by the green sands of Nasanti, those sands depowering the wearer for a certain amount of time. Maybe Wong gave Banner that cuff to depower him so that they could temporarily heal his arm when he was in human form. Because as Hulk, his flesh is otherwise so impenetrable they couldn't really do anything to him. Let's move on. Hmm, that's an interesting thought. Those are like the baseline of any woman just Existing. Oh. I like that joke. Feels like if I don't transform, I'm gonna die. Yes, yes, yes. No. <laughs> okay, now to the gamma lab. Again, I think this is the one Hulk spent the 18 months in. Banner deliberately provokes Jen's anger with this torture device. Their swim gear indicates that this lab is underground, their tropical Mexican home. Now, whereas in the November teaser, the screens beside Banner showed Jen's face, here it shows an X ray of her brain with the limbic system highlighted. The limbic system is the inner part of the brain that controls emotion. As Banner now says, the Hulk abilities are activated by anger and fear. We flash back to Jen's car accident transformation, and while she can't exactly see a reflection, fully the car paint is green which masks her own skin color change and yeah we see how this chamber is a total death pod razors spinning and if you look closely at those razors when she breaks them especially you can see they are stark industries brand so this means tony stark may have helped banner set up this gamma lab during those 18 months working alongside him as a lab partner to help him reach this wonderful smart hulk state isn't that great and after these razors successfully mm. trigger the fear to activate her she hulk form banner we'll gives these thumbs up <laughs> looking just as he did to encourage the Avengers during their quantum experiment in Endgame. Such a and fucking dork, is man. Much of an absolute win. Next clip. I just want to be a normal, anonymous lawyer. Can you tell us where She-Hulk is? Jen, you're a story now. Girl, your ass looks crazy right now. Okay, we see Jen in what looks like her <laughs> bedroom. There's a play poster for Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream, which is a play all about physical transformation and the sexual arousal that arrives with it. I assume Jen might relocate here after getting some unwanted media attention due to her condition. Then we see Jen in her She-Hulk form trying to go about her work routine, but finds herself just getting stared at. Even that receptionist snaps a photo. Using the flash with all this great natural lighting? Come on! Now, there's been a lot of chatter about the unfinished CGI on She-Hulk and her face in this trailer. I think it was bound to happen it, it honestly doesn't bother me as much as it does some of you it really yeah only i'm not bothered by it at all we're looking at her phone and it's not so much the animation it's really just the timing and the movement notice how her eyes are slightly out of sync with her body as it moves like i get it they're trying to animate this gesture of uh, jen reacting to something on the phone and then her eyes gesture to the side like what do i do but they dart as her body is still straightening up which just feels a little weirdly unnatural. Like, if you were animated in a cartoon, you would do one move after the other. You'd have the back straighten, and then the eyes dart to the side. And due to the uncanny valley effect that is encoded in our brains, our minds just weirdly accept more cartoony blocking as more naturalistic. Which is why, when you watch Pixar animation, they deliberately animate their characters to move more cartoony and slapsticky. Because we grew up watching cartoons, our brains just kind of accept that as natural. That's why they call it the uncanny valley. You have to go a little bit beyond what would be natural movement, so that when we watch animated green characters, we just accept it. I, I see this as an absolute win. I will say, I really appreciate that they designed well, I, to I, have proportionately it's also, hands, because remember, Hulk's it's also a couple months away, so this probably isn't the final result either. And, I mean, we're comparing it to images of uh, Professor Hulk from Endgame, which had like a, 
like a much larger team behind it as far as the artists and the budget and the money. I don't know if that's exactly a fair one to one right there, but he is right as far as like uh, how our brains navigate the uncanny valley in a way because she's more human even than Professor Hulk, even though there's a, a lot of hu more human characteristics. But if we compare it like straight up to the Monster Hulk, like Hulk Hulk from Ragnarok or even the Incredible Hulk, you know, like if we go into the more fantastical or even Abomination, it's easier to trigger brains because we don't have a frame of reference like we do like a human face that we see every single day. So we will see those unnatural movements, those maybe play doh features here and there and stuff like that. Is that lighting's not exactly right? Because that's just how our brains are trained from birth is to recognize human features. I don't know. It's a fun little thing. But uh, that aside, it doesn't bother me at all. I mean, if it was like a movie, maybe a little bit more. But uh, yeah, as a Disney Plus series, I'm not at all bothered by even what we saw even if that ended up being the final product for me. Fists are larger than a human's hands would be compared to the arms. But the problem is you still just don't get a sense of the weight of the phone in her hands. The way that they showed the weight as Hulk pinched the tacos or, or clutched the sausage rolled in a pancake. Look, again, none of this is that big of a deal, I don't think. They are still rendering all these effects ahead of August. And I definitely don't think... See, this scene, I thought that looked bad. good. So let's just all chill out, okay? It Some scenes, I think, look fine. This series for leaning into the tone yes. of the character She-Hulk and especially the overt sexual Yes. <laughs> do not shy away from as she was really an intentionally campy satire of the way comics as a whole would over sexualize female superheroes she Hulk was really the first female superhero to completely own it and make it a joke this show definitely seems to be embracing that like the shot of all the gawkers at the garden party the woman on the left is the funniest to me like come on eyes up here lady <laughs> but... you could be an avenger oh i'm not a superhero that is for billionaires and narcissists and adult orphans for some reason. So Jen bursts out of her shoes as someone tries to attack her from behind for growth lifting With a glowing off. helmet. This attacker wears an interesting helmet that emits an energy glow. Not sure what this is, but it does remind me of the advanced hardware that Adrian Toon's crew lifted from Chitauri Tech in Spider-Man Homecoming. Mickey encourages her to join the Avengers as we see She-Hulk and Hulk leaping beside each other on that island in a training montage. And while Hulk hits a superhero landing, I like how Jen does it. She just kind of lands in this less dignified squat with her elbows beneath her knees. Jen tells Nikki that the Avengers are for billionaires and narcissists and a orphans referring to well i guess tony stark who was all of those things but also if you think about it technically t'challa might be the richest avenger if you quantify the value of vibranium per ounce and peter parker just lost the last of his parental guardians he's kind of an adult orphan who exactly are you throwing shade at here jan and really <laughs> time says orphan one cannot help but think of orphan black the series where she showcased her amazing talent then jen barefoot and clothes torn suggesting she was not prepared to hulk out here tears across a damaged courtroom toward a foe the other shot reveals this is Titania Jamila Jamil Mary McFerrin she hulks a longtime nemesis in the comics now Titania gets powered up by alien technology and has powers that mm, interesting like she's smashed into this courtroom maybe to interrupt this trial keep someone from testifying her outfit looks wild something like a pro wrestler but then there's a quick shot of this leaping dude this is the fabulous frog man Eugene Patillo one of the real goofball Marvel characters son of the leapfrog Vincent Patillo Eugene takes on his dad's frog costume he adds these spring coils so that it can leap six stories in the air he showed up with <laughs> spider-man the human torch as well as the Avengers okay Star interesting to give a huge congrats to long time wow man stan mt for frogman finally getting his mcu debut i assume he will be another one of jen's cases we get a quick shot of abomination hulking out in his containment cell ripping out of his inmate jumpsuit as in shang chi the character has been redesigned from the 2008 film to better match his comic appearance he now has fins on the side of his head and as he bumps his head the red glow oh. flashes over that container cell meaning this cell may be equipped to shock him with pain whenever he tries to hulk out of it then on to the last clip. Is there anything more depressing than dating in your 30s? Yeah, this is the best date I've had in a while. Oh. Should we split some fries? Let's get those to go. 
So Jen swipes through a dating app on her phone, match her, and I like how she swipes right on everyone. And there's some great Easter eggs here, of course. Scott, dog lover, eight miles away. Grant, jump rope king, 12 miles away. Oh, you're trying to be clever there, Grant. Nick, DJ, 60 miles away. Noah, director, 24 miles away. Nice scarf, Noah. But my favorite is truck, local cutie, 32 <laughs> miles away. Not exactly local. But this is actually a cameo by series creator Jessica Gao's partner, artist Truck Torrance, and their cat, Admiral Whiskers. Truck oh. the captain's hats to salute the Admiral. So sweet of Jessica to get her local cutie in there. Now, the other names she swipes through that we see from reverse are Bryce, Charles, Chris, Kevin, Feige, and Derek. And then we see a few of these dates, including one guy who flexes. This is actually WWE wrestler David Ortunga, but she ends the night with his other hunk taking those fries to go. And we end with her carrying the beefcake back to her room as his foot knocks the lamp. Again, folks, a hard yes to more sexual liberation. Yes. A rock hard yes. Because otherwise, this MCU. She Hulk smash. Sex scene was completely snoo, terrible. snoo. We never got any sex in the MCU. Sex is a normal part of adult life. It's okay to have it. I'm super excited for the series to come to the MCU on August 17th. You can see yeah, man. Stars by checking out our merch options at Neurox Stars. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it, man. I really am. Subscribe to Neurox Stars for more analysis. Subscribe to New Rock Stars. Follow them on Twitter. All that jazz, man. For all the lovely work they put into these videos. And all the information they impart into us less knowledgeable folk. Like myself. But I, I really enjoyed it, man. Yeah, the CGI, like, I called it out, but it doesn't bother me. It's just like, it's an expectation. It was an observation. But I, I think some people are really, really dogging on it. And I just, like, I just don't see the point of ragging on it so much. I really don't. But it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Uh, I really like the tone that we've seen of it and all the different characters and I'm really curious to see if we have like a case of the week thing, you know, for each episode. We follow a different case with an overarching narrative, maybe uh, throughout it. I'm very curious to see what the structure of this is going to be. But I'm all for it. I like I just I'd love just a slice of life superhero thing following Jennifer Walters as she's doing her thing. And every now and then she's just got to Hulk out and beat some ass. Let's do it. Guys, what do you think of the breakdown? What are some Easter eggs you thought? Your interpretations, your theories? Sound out the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Feel free to join us in our Discord. We can talk about it there as well. Links to that and all my socials down below. Follow me in each and every one of those if you feel like it. And I'd really appreciate it if you would. Before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends. Manny Share, Ryan, Karen, Jason Coleman, Philly Bain, York, Corey Scott, Margaret Grace, Mary Bradley, Melita, and Robert Anguiano. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. And I hope you guys stick around and follow as we watch this show and react to it here on the channel in August when this thing drops. But that's it for now, guys. I'll see you all on the next one. Take care, everybody.